Welcome back. Naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. I hope you reviewed the video uh, where I define what a polyatomic ion is. Um, now we're going to, just like I've done in the last few videos, I'm going to run through a few examples uh, of how to name polyatomic ions. Here we're going to go from the formula to the name, which I believe, of course, is the easier way. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go from the name to the formula which will be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, now, as I've shown you in the last video, on our periodic table, we have a table or a chart that uh, shows a number of polyatomic ions. This is going to be different. This table and this chart is going to be different on each periodic table that you look at. Uh, there will be one standard periodic table that you'll use. It's in your data booklet. And of course, um, I would never expect you, as I've said before, to memorize any of these. Uh, but we will take a look at uh, how to use these. And of course, I'll only ever give you questions that will have uh, the polyatomic ion that we're using in the question uh, in that table. Our first example here is ALPO4. Now, again, how do I identify that this, um, that this compound, uh, first of all, is ionic? And then second of all, it deals with a polyatomic ion. Well, the very first thing that we need to look at, if it's ionic, it's going to have a metal ion in that. So it's going to have a positive or a cation. The second thing that uh, is going to trigger this, um, and cluing into the fact that we're dealing with polyatomic ions, is again, it's going to have two capital letters. So here we have uh, phosphorus and oxygen. So that's how we know that we're dealing with polyatomic ions. So let's take a look at naming this one. So again, I know that that first one is aluminum. Aluminum right here. Okay, and PO4. Now I have to go to my chart. I don't necessarily know what that is. And again, I don't have to worry about being balanced at this stage in the game uh, because whenever I'm given a chemical formula, I'll know that it is balanced. So here, PO4, I find it. Uh, that is phosphate. So this is just called aluminum phosphate. Okay, It's just that easy. Exactly the same as dealing with and naming the other polyatomic ions that we've dealt with. Go on to our second example. KNO2. So we know that K is uh, potassium right here. Potassium and then NO2 is right here. Nitrite, so this is potassium nitrite. Okay, moving on to our third example CaCO3. Ca is calcium. CO3, let's go and take a look. CO3 is right over here. There we are. So again, we can write that full name down as calcium carbonate. Okay, it's just that simple. And again, our next example, this is magnesium. And again, there's magnesium and hydroxide. Hydroxide is right here, OH. And you will get used to these names uh, the, more, uh, the more that we do them. Magnesium, hydroxide, and our last one here, Last one here, BACN2. Okay, BA is barium. And here we find CN, barium, cyanide. Okay, and as I've said, this is always easier going from the compound uh, when we're given the compound. It's definitely easier to go from the compound uh, itself or the formula to the name because we don't have to worry about balancing it. 
Uh, in the next video, we're going to go from the name to the formula. It's going to be a little bit more complicated in balancing it. Uh, again, this is just practice, getting used to where things are, uh, particularly on that table of polyatomic ions. See you next time. Science.